Now we will see how to determine different terminals of a capacitor. This is an electrolytic capacitor in which the long leg is the positive terminal while the shorter leg is the negative terminal. This is a ceramic capacitor and it has no polarity issue. Now we will learn how to calculate the value of a particular capacitor. We can see a number 104 written on ceramic capacitor. 1 is first significant digit, 0 is second significant digit while 4 is the multiplier. To calculate the value write it as 1 0 that is 10 into 10 raised to the power 4 and this final answer is in picofarad. So the final value gives us 0.1 microfarad. Therefore, this ceramic capacitor is of value 0.1 microfarad. Now we will see the connections for our BC547 transistor. In this, make the flat surface of the transistor face towards you, then invert the transistor. Traversing in the clockwork direction, we have emitter, base and collector respectively. This is the circuit diagram for our common emitter amplifier. The initial specification taken are beta equal to 100, collector current equal to 4 milliamps, VCC equal to 12 volt and the transistor taken is BC547BP. According to our calculation, RC is equal to 1.2 kilo ohms, R1 27 kilo ohms, R2 4.7 kilo ohms, RE 330 ohms, C1 0.1 microfarad, C2 0.1 microfarad, CE 47 microfarad and the input voltage signal 100 millivolt peak to peak. The oscilloscope in the oscilloscope connection the positive terminals are connected as given in the circuit diagram while all the negative terminals are grounded. Now we will have a look at all the circuit elements being used in our CE amplifier. A 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, BC547 BP transistor, 47 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, RC resistor, R1 resistor, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, R2 resistor, and RE resistor. This is the point from where a small input signal is taken and this is the point from where our amplified output signal is derived. C amplifier as was shown in the slide before. Um, this is a common emitter amplifier with an emitter bypass capacitance. We know that the gain is approximately GM into RC. This is the same thing we have connected here. We have <coughs> the voltage divider bias established by R1 and R2 and uh, the BJT, this is the collector resistance, this is the emitter resistance, the emitter bypass capacitance, this is the output coupling capacitor, this is the input coupling capacitor and this is the source resistance RS and from here we take the output which is fed to your oscilloscope second channel. The first channel of the oscilloscope, we have just connected the input itself because we want to compare the input and output. Now, first we will give the DC supply. This is the 12 volts and this is ground. And the 12 volts is connected to the point where the two resistances are connected, RC and R1. And ground is this the ground we have connected it here and we are going to feed an AC signal a small signal from the function generator this is the positive of the function generator we are taking a hundred millivolt signal and it is fed at this point at the base uh, uh, before the source resistance now let's switch on the power supply so now I have given the DC supply that means my amplifier is uh, 
uh, biased that is my transistor BJT is biased at a particular Q point. Now I am going to supply an AC signal. So I switch on the function generator. So I have to give a small signal to our amplifier. I have switched on the function generator. As you can see it is giving a sinusoid of 1 kilohertz. But what is the amplitude? As you can see the output at the oscilloscope we can see that the output is not what we wanted it is a very large amplitude signal and so the output is becoming distorted so i have to provide a small signal i provide that by pressing the attenuation button i just press it once it gives a 20 db attenuation you see that the signal has become a sinusoid but the output is still not a sinusoid it's distorted so I make the signal further small by providing 40 dB attenuation and then by varying the amplitude now we can set a 100 millivolt signal Now we have got a 100 millivolt signal which is the input and we can see the output at 1 kilohertz. You can see that the output is approximately, we can say that the output is approximately 1.5 divisions into 2 volts which is approximately 3 volts. Now the frequency is 300 hertz, right? And uh, my input is 100 millivolts peak to peak, and my output is approximately 1.4 divisions into 1 volt, so it is 1.4 volts. So we can see that the gain is around 14. Now, as I increase the frequency, you can see that the amplitude of the output increases for example let us observe it at 700 hertz now at 700 hertz you can see that the output amplitude has increased to approximately 2.2 volts and then as I increase the frequency further to let's say 1 kilohertz the output has further increased to 2.5 volts the input is a sinusoid 100 millivolts 10 kilohertz signal we can see here by overlapping the two waveforms like this we can see that it is providing a 180 degree phase shift where the above one is the input and the signal below is the output. There is a perfect 180 degree phase shift between the input and the output. So as you can see at 10 kilohertz I've got the in signal 100 millivolts and amplified uh, to 2.8 volt signal. Now, we know that the C amplifier has a range of frequencies which it amplifies with a constant gain and beyond a particular high frequency, the gain starts to fall which is called the cutoff frequency, upper cutoff frequency. So, we can just observe that phenomenon here. For example, now if I increase the frequency, now let me just this is approximately 50 kilohertz. The gain hasn't changed much. As you can see, it is still 2.8 divisions into 1 volt, approximately 2.8 volt. So let me increase the frequency further. 
let me increase the multiplication factor so let me set it to approximately 100 kilohertz now this is 100 kilohertz I see the gain again the gain has fallen little bit you can see that the it's now approximately 2.5 divisions into 1 volt which is 2.5 volt now we can observe that this is 100 kilohertz as I increase the frequency you can observe that the gain falls this is 375 kilohertz if I increase the frequency further you can see that the output is becoming more and more smaller for the common emitter amplifier what happens when we remove the emitter bypass capacitor actually when we remove the emitter bypass capacitor as it's shown here the circuit there is a feedback negative feedback introduced because of which the gain falls drastically the gain now becomes approximately the ratio of collector resistance and the what emitter happens resistance when we remove the emitter bypass capacitance now with the emitter bypass capacitance as you can see there we have the input as 0.1 volt p to p and the output is approximately 2.8 divisions into 1 volt 2.8 volt so the gain is approximately 28 now when we remove the emitter bypass capacitance the gain falls drastically it has become so small that I have to change the old per division of the output 